Yeah, I want to start off today by uh, first of all congratulating uh, Coach Cook and the volleyball team. I got a chance to watch that, and man, what a great win for them. And looking forward to watching uh, Thursday and hopefully Saturday. So good luck to those girls. Um, you know, it's been an exciting couple weeks here uh, for me and for Nebraska football. Uh, a lot of changes and a lot of work going into getting some uh, new coaches on board and getting some new players on board. Uh, that's exciting to me. Um, really happy with the, the changes and the, the uh, new guys that we have coming on board, both uh, on the staff and on the roster. Um, you know, college football's changing, and um, I think we have to be light on our feet and make sure that, that we're adapting to some of those changes. Um, the recruiting process is changing a little bit, and it can be uncomfortable at times, but uh, we're going to play the game the best we can. Um, really excited about the young men that, that we've added today. Uh, I would imagine we're not done with the recruiting process, uh, and that's going to keep going probably uh, through Christmas break into the next signing period and maybe even beyond that. Um, I knew we weren't going to sign very many kids this year uh, for some of those reasons. Uh, we don't have a lot of spots on our roster as it stands today, and so we were really selective with the kids that uh, we decided to recruit and take. And um, I think through that selective process, we landed on some really good guys that, that we feel good about being able to help us right now and definitely develop into uh, really good football players. Um, so there's going to be a lot of new faces uh, when we get back after Christmas break, uh, both in the coaches' offices and in the meeting rooms with the players, um, and really looking forward to to starting fresh with that group of guys and adding them to the young talent and young leaders that we have on our football team and um, plowing our way forward. So it's a good day for us. Uh, it's been a good couple weeks and uh, looking forward to working with all these guys. Um, you know, rather than get asked questions, I think I'll just kind of go through the commits from today and and give you a brief comment about them. But uh, Chase Andros, a guy that uh, from Minnesota, a tight end for us that uh, Coach Beckton identified early on as somebody that he thought fit what he wanted to do. Um, we're excited about him, love his size and his potential. Um, you know, we got some good young tight ends in the program right now and, and wouldn't have taken one there if we didn't think uh, he was a talented kid that could come in and help us. Uh, so he's coming down from Minnesota and, and really excited to see what he can do. Um, Go alphabetical here. Jake Applegate, Applegate is a Lincoln Southeast kid and was at our camp. We really liked him. Um, really like his athletic ability. Uh, played both sides of the football for Lincoln Southeast. I was able to go to one of their football games and watch him. Uh, he's a Husker through and through and, and a Lincoln kid. Um, we don't want to miss on really good athletes that, that we feel like can develop into elite football players for us right here in the state of Nebraska. So Jake was a pretty easy decision for us and, and looking forward to spending more time with him. Uh, Justin Evans uh, is a kid that we've had our eye on for a long time. Uh, and it, his whole recruitment kind of happened late. But um, he's a kid that wrestles in high school, uh, has the right demeanor, love how aggressive he plays, really believe in his potential. Um, we kind of were selective with our spots and being careful with our spots and, and didn't want to give them away to anybody that, that we didn't think was uh, somebody that we felt really good about being able to come in and make a difference for us. Um, we brought Justin in on the last uh, visit possible. And, and then after he was here, everybody liked him even more. Um, really wanted him to get around our new offensive line coach, Coach Riola, and, and they hit it off. And, and Donnie really believes in him. so. Uh, really excited to get that addition late. Uh, another late addition from New Jersey was uh, Jaden Gold. And Coach Dawson did a great job with him. Coach Chins and Coach Fish both did a great job with him. Um, he's somebody we recruited really hard early on in the process. And he was committed to another school. And there was a lot of change, obviously, in college football this year. And a, and a lot of kids committed to places all of a sudden uh, at the end of the season found a that they were committed somewhere without a coach or a different coach. Uh, I think that changed a lot of perspectives and, and got a lot of kids uh, back on the market. We were just elated that, that Jaden uh, kind of got back in touch with us. I flew out to Jersey to see him and his family. Um, I feel like he's a big time player that, uh, that can come in and, and hopefully help us early. And uh, we just feel great about getting back in on him. 
Um, Malcolm Hartzog's another DB, uh, one of the players of the year in Mississippi. Another kid, we didn't know a whole lot about him until uh, one of the bye weeks when the coaches went out. Coach Chins did a great job of going down and hitting the pavement down south. Um, came back and told me that everywhere he went, all the coaches in the area were talking about him. Uh, I think he's a kid that has a really good corner skill, uh, can also help us on special teams and in the return game. And uh, he came up on a visit, and everybody loved his personality and everything too. So kind of another late ad with Malcolm, but I'm, I'm really excited about him. Um, Ernest Hausman from right here in the state. Uh, Man, I'm, I'm fired up about Ernest. He's uh, a Nebraska kid from Norfolk. Uh, hasn't been playing football his whole life like a lot of kids, uh, but I see the potential there for him to, to have an elite career. Um, really excited to add him to our young core of, of linebackers and see what he can do. Love his demeanor. Um, love his uh, love for the game and, and really fired up about his talent. Uh, Victor Jones is a receiver. Coach Beckton did a great job with him. Um, we've known Victor since my time in Florida. Uh, another kid with, I think, uh, elite speed and potential at that position. Um, Victor also does some really good things on special teams in the kick return and punt return game. Uh, he was one of our earliest commits, and, and we're grateful that he stuck with us and is going to come up and play for us. So excited to get him into the program. Uh, Jaleel Martin, uh, Fish did a great job with. Um, Jaleel's a, a safety from Chicago that wasn't really on our radar until he came down to football camp this summer. And uh, Fish started watching him and started to get really interested. Then he went and grabbed Chins, and Chins started to get really interested. And then they came and grabbed me, and I got really interested. Um, another great kid and great family. Um, feel honestly like he's under recruited a little bit and, and we're lucky that, that we got him to Nebraska. Uh, Deshaun is a junior college safety from Hutch. Um, kid originally from Louisiana, uh, came up on a midweek visit last week. Um, we actually uh, started watching him over the course of the, the fall semester and during the season and we're really impressed with him. Uh, just needed to get around him and make sure he was our kind of guy and uh, Fish uh, drove all the way to Hutch to watch a game um, the weekend before he came up, and he was here on a, a Wednesday, Thursday visit. Um, really excited about him. Um, safety's one spot where on our roster we're a little short of numbers, and I think he's going to be a really good addition that, that hopefully he'll come in and compete right away. Um, Gage is, is awesome. Uh, really excited about him, too. Um, you know, his team was probably throughout the course of the year, one of the best in the state, and he was arguably one of the best players in the state. Uh, if there's a player like that in Nebraska, we want him here. Again, another great kid from a great family and high character guy. Um, not sure where Gage will end up playing yet, but have a lot of confidence in him as an athlete that uh, wherever he ends up, he's going to make a difference on our football team. Um, Brody Tagaloa, um, kid from California. Um, we were recruiting him for a long time. Tony Tuyote did a great job with him. Uh, plays tight end at his school, plays D-line. Uh, another guy that I'm not 100% sure where he's going to end up, but just love his size and athletic ability, uh, who he is as a person and as a kid. And can't wait to get him in the program and find out where the best spot is for him. And I know he'll be a difference maker. Uh, and finally, uh, Richie Torres. Um, I'm really selective with quarterbacks. Um, we were looking at a lot of guys, recruiting a lot of guys, had some guys and names on our board. Um, Richie goes to a school where I don't think uh, recruiters go through as much as some other places, and in my opinion, was a little bit under the radar. Uh, I think he's got elite arm talent. Um, got hurt this year, uh, but he'll be back in, in early enrollee and ready for spring, and uh, especially uh, with Coach Whip coming in and some of the things that we're thinking about doing I think he's going to fit in real well and can't wait to work with him. Uh, so again, it's a smaller class this year. We were super selective, which is a compliment to these guys, uh, to their character and ability on the field. Um, excited to make these additions and excited to keep our eye open for some more additions. Sean, I'm going to have to start calling you. Uh, 
for help. Um, you know, the, it, it used to be pretty simple. You had 85 scholarships and this many kids are graduating and this many kids are coming in. Um, and I think the days of signing 25 on signing day and going to the next signing day and so signing 25 are probably over. Um, there's uh, extra years with COVID now and transfer portal possibilities and other things. And it's kind of a, a moving target all the time. But our goal is going to try to be to be as nimble as we can through all those changes and adjustments to college football and uh, try to accumulate the best players we can and put the best team together that we can. Um, that's one of the reasons we didn't want to sign that many and be, we wanted to be sure about the kids we were signing. Um, there's literally hundreds of kids in the transfer portal right now and I expect there'll be more. Um, we feel really good about a few of them already that are, are potentially going to join our team and we can't talk about that. Uh, we feel really good about some other ones that you guys might not have heard of and their chances of joining the team. And um, I don't want to live in that world, but if there's players that come up in, in, in the portal that we feel like can make us a better team and fit with our culture and our team and, and make us better, that, that we're going to keep our eye on that and definitely save some spots uh, in case those those people uh, show up and want to be at Nebraska. Is it pretty set in your mind to go get a quarterback out of the portal? That's the first part. The second part is would you entertain the thought of taking the two? We're going to take the best guys that we can to help our football team, whether that's uh, high school kids or junior college kids or, or transfer portal kids. And um, we're, we're taking a look at everybody that we think merits a look. Um, Quarterback's definitely a spot that, that we're taking a look at every kid that we can. Um, I think uh, our mind is is uh, leaning toward taking one in the portal right now. Uh, we're low on numbers right there, but it has to be the right one too. And um, we're working through that right now, but at, at all these positions, if there's a player we feel like we can help, that can help us, that we can get, we're, we're probably gonna take them. How have you found your, your vision and, and Mark Whipple's vision in terms of what you want a quarterback to be? I mean, Yeah, it's been great with Whip. Uh, you know, up to this point, most of our focus has been uh, on getting a coaching staff put together and getting a recruiting class put together. Um, I really, I've known Whip for a long time and kept in touch with him for a long time. Um, really admire what he does and, and what he was able to do in his career and this year at Pittsburgh. And um, same with Mickey. You know, Mickey's coming from a, a program that won a national championship and had an elite offense and, and Donovan's coming from uh, a pro offense and uh, I, after we get all, through today and, and some of the things that we're doing now I can't wait to sit in a room with those guys and, and talk offense and and figure out exactly um, what we're going to look like and what we're going to be uh, but I, I have a lot of confidence that uh, the marriage of, of those things are going to come together real well because there's some elite coaches and really smart guys in that room. We're going to do what gives us the best chance to win. And I, I think that's going to require some really smart guys sitting down in a room and figuring it out. A little bit will probably be decided on uh, the players that we have in the room at that point. Uh, but there's a lot of offenses that work if you execute and do them well. And I can't wait to, to try to mix what we're doing with some of the things that those guys are doing and uh, hopefully get even better. What did you like most about, about Whipple in, in selecting him as your offensive coordinator? I think you probably had quite a few options. Why did you pick him? Why did you uh, talked to a lot of guys, sat down with a lot of guys. Uh, There's some really unbelievable guys that I sat down and talked to, and I was I was really encouraged by the level of interest from uh, some of the best guys, in, in my opinion, in the country. Um, you know, w when it came right down to it, uh, I think what Pitt did this year and and just uh, Whip's intelligence and personality. Um, you know, if I'm going to take a step back at all from, from coaching offense I, uh, and calling plays, I, I wanted somebody that um, had done it a lot, was experienced, um, that had done it at an elite level, that had coached at an elite level, and that I felt like could go in a room and take over and, and be the face of the offense. And, um, you know, I didn't really know, uh, other than through, through third parties, that Whip would have any interest and kind of found that out late and was able to, to sit down with him. And it was a pretty easy decision after I was able to do that. 
uh, just his passion for the game, his knowledge of football, uh, and his, his command of what he likes to do uh, is really impressive. What were the traits that, that Donovan had, even as a, a younger guy in the profession, that made you want, want him for that spot? Yeah, I, you know, I kind of look at him as a younger guy, too. Uh, I was 38 when I became an offensive coordinator. Uh, I think Coach Osborne was 34 when he got the head job here. Uh, so Donnie's 39, and I guess that makes you a young guy in the business. I wish I was 39 again. Um, you know, I, the first time I met Donovan was actually at a high school practice when I was recruiting. And uh, I'd heard his name before and knew where he was, uh, but I'm not sure how much interest I had. Uh, we started talking about what he believed in on the offensive line, the technique that he coached, and I got pretty interested pretty fast. Um, there was, again, some unbelievable candidates and, and a couple that really that it came down to that I think both would have done a, a great job. Um, really, when I sat down and watched film with Donnie and, and watched what he was teaching and what was being done, uh, felt like it would make a, a big difference on our offensive line. And um, again, I, I really impressed with his character, uh, uh, with his demeanor, and I think that's important with uh, the offensive line we have and the relationship that I know he's going to have with the guys. So um, really could, couldn't be more excited about uh, landing on that. And I know he, this is going to be his, his first big job. Um, and sometimes those guys are really hungry. And, and that's what I expect from, from Donnie. And, and he's going to work his butt off to make this work. Yeah, those are decisions we still have to make. I think I'm really close to, to getting those things done. Uh, regardless of where it lands, I know we're going to be coached really well um, at running back and on special teams. Um, wanted to get the coordinator thing done first. Ended up having an opportunity to hire Mickey, so got that done before the coordinator. Um, and then found the O-line coach that I wanted. Uh, we got one more spot left. and. Um, now with signing day done, uh, imagine I'll turn my full attention to that. Uh, but uh, have a pretty good idea what I want to do, and I think it'll be coming pretty quick and, and feel good about us uh, being coached well at, at both running back and special teams. What specifically did you like about what, how Rayola teaches? Um, maybe I'll let him talk about that when you get a chance to talk to him. Uh, but uh, to me, what he coaches is, is really modern. Uh, it, it's what I believe in. Um, he's going to get the guys ripping off the ball and running and, and trying to get people moved. And, and it's a little different uh, than what some other people coach. And um, again, it's what I believe in. And, and based on our personnel and the type of offense that we run, uh, I think it's the best thing for us. And I think he's as good a guy as there is to teach, uh, teach those things and what we want to get done. What you already seen from Coach Joseph about his recruiting acumen, his effort, his contacts, all those things? Yeah, I mean, he. He's a smart guy, first and foremost. Um, he loves Nebraska. Uh, this is where he wanted to be. I'm grateful for that. I think he's going to be able to help us on offense. I think he's going to be able to help me as a head coach because of some of his experience. Uh, coach Whip, too, um, which is wanted and needed. And there's no question that he's going to work his tail off to try to get us the best players that we can in this program. And um, we need a few more guys like that that are uh, out hitting the pavement and, and trying to bring the best guys possible to Lincoln. So, how did you find the, the environment as you went out? Obviously, there's been a lot of major changes at head coach level and on staffs around the country. And I guess when some of the numbers that are being thrown around in the country, $10 million a year for head coaches and things like that, I mean, did you feel like you were able to compete the way you wanted to and, and get done what you need to in that environment? In hiring coaches? Yeah. yeah um, you know, there's a lot of changes going on in college football right now, and it's crazy. And um, even in recruiting, you know, I can't tell you with 30-some coaching changes how many kids, again, had kind of had rugs pulled out from them right before signing day. And I think there's going to be a lot more guys available in February because of that. Um, coaching's no different. There's a lot of movement, a lot of change. Uh, and again, I was really excited uh, by the interest level in our jobs and, and the people that wanted to be a part of this. And um, Landed on the guys that I think uh, fit us the best and give us the best chance. And um, everywhere I went, there was a lot of excitement and uh, a lot of people recognized how, how hard our kids played last year and how close we were in a lot of games and uh, a lot of people that wanted to be a part of that. How do you evaluate and explain how recruits are going to fit into your offense when you guys are still kind of formulating what that's going to 
Well, uh, you know, there's going to be elements probably of what we do and a lot of elements of what other people do. And at the end of the day, you can either run it or throw it. And uh, uh, I think we'll land on a good combination of that. Again, I don't want to say too much because um, I want to keep as much uh, under my sleeve as I can. But um, I, I know kids feel great about uh, where we're going, and, and we talk to those kids about that a little bit and what we're going to do on both sides of the ball. And um, again, a lot of people that want to be a part of it. Well, how would you characterize your confidence in your, your returning quarterbacks, Smothers, Heinrich? I'm, I'm confident in those guys. And Coach Whip's had a chance to look at those guys already, too. And he's confident in those guys. Um, so again, if, if those are our guys going into the year, I feel great about it. I wouldn't have taken those guys. Um, I thought Logan played three excellent quarters against Iowa, and um, we didn't finish great. Um, said all along, I think H has uh, a ton of talent, and it's just a matter of time with him. Um, so we're, we're really excited about those guys, and I know Whip is too. And if there's the right guy to add to that competition, we will. No, you know, I actually think this year was probably a little easier than last. Um, and part of that's, you know, we weren't able to go out on the road for a lot of days, weren't able to uh, go see kids, and weren't able to have kids on campus. But uh, when we get kids on this campus, we've got a great chance to get them. Um, I think a lot of coaches around the country and kids around the country saw how, how well we played um, despite the results. And um, we're looking for a few guys that are, are going to make the difference to get us over that hump. And, uh, we'll keep looking for him. Yeah, those were tough decisions. Um, you know, I, I, I respect those guys and appreciate so much what all those guys have poured into our program. Um, for some of the guys that are leaving, they've been here five years. Um, started four years for guys like Cam Taylor Britt, for guys like Adrian. Um, those are tough decisions. Uh, wish them nothing but the best. Uh, Would have liked to keep a lot of them here, but uh, you know, those guys are making the decisions that they think are best for them. And, and every one of them uh, had great conversations with them and talked to them about hoping they succeed and they want us to do to succeed and do well. And you know, there's programs all over the country that are losing guys and, and replacing those types of guys aren't going to be easy, but that's our job, and, and we'll get there. You had a couple of guys in the recruiting class, uh, Martin and Applegate, that you mentioned you got uh, with camps. How important was it to have those camps back, especially being able to do those prior workouts back? It's really important, especially for us. Um, you know, there's a lot of schools a lot closer to recruiting areas with more uh, recruits every year than we have. Uh, getting kids to Lincoln is really important for us because I've said it a bunch, but when we get to kids to Lincoln and they see our facilities and they meet the people and they see the environment here, uh, we got a great chance of getting them once they're here. Uh, camps help us do that. Obviously, having visitors for games help us do that. Uh, we went basically a whole recruiting cycle without being able to get anybody here. And, and having those camps and opportunities for kids to get to Lincoln, uh, Lincoln and this university kind of sell themselves. And as many as we can get to Lincoln, and it, it gives us a big benefit. Rick Grail has got uh, a lot of history with centers, um, obviously playing that position, personal position. What, do, you, do you feel like you have a guy or the guy on your, on your roster now that could step in for Cam, or is that also a portal possibility? We're going to look for the best possible that we can with remaining spots in the portal. I don't know what positions those will be. Um, but I've said before, I, I feel great about some of the young talent in our program. And I feel great that Donovan's going to get some of the guys that we already have in the program playing uh, at, a, at a higher level than, than they have and, and playing better. Um, you know, we got a lot of guys that have taken snaps at center. Nuri's taken snaps at center. Ethan Piper's taken snaps at center. Trent Hickson's taken snaps at center. Um, I think there's a possibility a couple other guys could be that guy. At the end of the day, uh, I got a lot of confidence in, in those guys and in Donnie to get them right, and then we'll, we'll get the best five out. I have a good idea, Sam, of who I want them to be. Um, those guys have to do it. And I just got done meeting with our entire roster, uh, individual meetings. Um, there were some that I told it's time to step up. Uh, as a player, there's some other ones I told that 
you know, I'm really excited where you are as a player. We need you to step up as a leader. And that, that's going to start right away when we hit the weight room in January. Uh, we need guys setting the example and holding everybody else accountable to that standard. And uh, some of those guys are going to be the same. Some of them are going to be new faces. Uh, but feel really good about the, the character and ability for some of those guys to take on those leadership you roles. Of, is there any of those names you can share, guys that you know now? No, because I don't want to leave anybody out. But, um, you know, the, the we got high character kids on our football team uh, that are going to work their, their tails off. And uh, leadership's pretty easy. And that's setting the standard and holding everybody else to that standard. And I think uh, a lot of guys returning on defense have already been doing that. Uh, there's some holes to fill on offense from that standpoint. But um, we got a lot of guys that do things the right way and go about things the right way. And uh, I just need their voice to expand and their role to expand. Uh, I think it makes a difference. I think it has a chance to continue to grow here based on the interest level in Nebraska football. And I think our, our student athletes, not just football players, but student athletes have a, have a great opportunity to benefit from that here uh, as much or more than anywhere else in the country. Um, so I think it, it's probably starting to make a difference, but I expect that, uh, that difference to maybe even continue to get bigger as we go down the road. Right. Thank, Thank you, you guys. Scott.